Hello, I'm David Rose, and here's a look at some of our top cases this week on Washington's Most Wanted, starting with a case in Seattle where police need your help to identify a gunman who shot a man in the leg. Now, detectives have exhausted all the leads they had, and they're hoping the surveillance video will help spark your memory. Now, this shooting happened at Prefontaine Place just across the street from the King County Courthouse in downtown Seattle on March 4th at about 11.30 p.m. Retired Seattle Detective Merle Carner with Crime Stoppers of Puget Sound describes what happened. You're going to see the suspect there. We conveniently put a circle around him and you watch that. And there's an altercation that takes place in Prefontaine Park. You're going to see the victim standing there talking and, and it, it, it's kind of like circling the wagon. All of a sudden it looks like they're going to get into a fight. You see a lot of people standing there. There's a lot of witnesses. And then all of a sudden, everybody starts running. That's when the gun comes out. And if you look close at the suspect in this case, you'll actually see a firearm in his hand. When you actually see the suspect point the weapon at the victim's head and chest, uh, we're not sure whether it was a misfire. We're not sure about this. But evidently, the victim thought, maybe it's not a real gun. And he's mad enough to pursue him across the street and continues to chase him. And if you watch the video close, you'll see the flash out of the end of the gun as he fires around back at the victim, which struck him in the leg. When the police came and found him, he was actually sitting inside an apartment complex, had his belt off, had a tourniquet around his leg to keep from bleeding to death. Well, detectives say the suspect is a thin black man around six feet tall. He was wearing a black beanie with a white logo black or dark colored hoodie, dark jeans, and bright white shoes with a black stripe on the tongue. If you know who this shooter is or can give any information to Seattle Police Detectives, please submit a tip to Crime Stoppers of Puget Sound. It is anonymous. We do not need people on our streets running around with guns, getting into arguments, and shooting people. Let's find out who he is and get him into custody. You will receive a cash reward of up to $1,000 if you can identify this shooter. The Washington State Department of Corrections and King County Sheriff's deputies are on the hunt tonight for a violent white supremacist gang member. His name is John Duvall, and his M.O. is breaking into people's homes. These stills taken by a hidden camera at a home in Shoreline last month show Duvall before the burglary. Detectives say he broke into that house and loaded up a suitcase full of jewelry and other valuables. You can see the big distinctive shin tattoo he has on his left leg. Well, he's wanted in King County now for that burglary and by the Department of Corrections for busting probation on a prior residential burglary conviction. He's mainly the north end. He's on Shoreline. Edmonds PD was also, was also looking for him for something similar. And uh, so he hangs out in the north end of King County, Snohomish County area. Most likely he's couch surfing or just living on the street or living a hotel to motel um, along the way. And uh, we're just hoping maybe a front desk person recognizes him or somebody else recognizes him and can call in that anonymous tip. He's got a history to be violent and uh, he is, thankfully the house that we have him on, nobody was home at the time, but the fear is what if somebody was home and we don't know what his ultimate plan is other than to steal items to make money and what if somebody was home, what would have happened? So we need to find him and get him off the streets as soon as possible. Well, Duval has been convicted of several home burglaries. He also has domestic violence, assault and harassment, robbery, theft, car prowling, forgery, and illegal drugs on his rap sheet. He's 43 years old. If you spot John Duval on the street or staying at a hotel or motel in North King, South Snohomish County, call 911. If you know where he's hiding, submit that information through the P3 Tips app to collect a cash reward of up to $1,000. These next two suspects will leave you seething. Lacey police say they prayed on an elderly woman knowing that her kind heart would make her an easy victim to scam. Hello, I'm Lacey Police Detective John Mason on behalf of Crime Stoppers of the South Sound. The Lacey Police Department requests your help in solving this crime of the week. On Wednesday, September 4th, just before 9 p.m., an elderly woman had her purse taken from her car. A black male and black female tricked her into helping them look for a ring which they claimed to have lost in the parking lot of Michaels and Lacey. That is Detective John Mason taping this week's featured Crime Stoppers of the South Sound case at the Mix 96.1 studios in Olympia. He's really hoping somebody can identify this couple who distracted a 73-year-old woman to steal her purse.
This nice lady walks into Michael's and she does her shopping there. And uh, unbeknownst to her, these two suspects are actually in the store with her. Uh, when she exits the store, uh, they come up to her in the parking lot as she's about to pull out and they go, hey, uh, can you help us find this ring? We just dropped it and lost it in the parking lot. So she gets out of her car, tries to help them find this ring. And then while she's looking on the ground, they pull out of there and leave and wave at her and say thank you as they're driving by. What they did was they went into her car while she was out there looking for this ring and stole her purse. Lacey police say the two quickly used her debit cards that were in that purse to buy gift cards at nearby stores. Lacey police think both of the suspects are in their 20s and they're linked to a green sedan. I mean, she's actually trying to help somebody and talk about no good deed goes unpunished. So they're just looking for any victim. So anybody vulnerable or anybody even nice to help them. So going into her car, taking that purse out of there, these people just need to be off the streets. If there's any other victims out there that have a similar experience, uh, maybe even have seen these people, uh, we know that they've used other credit cards that have been stolen. So we don't know if those have been out of the mail or if they've been other uh, purse thefts as well. The brazenness of these crimes that they're committing, uh, we know they're out there doing this to other people and we want to stop them. All right, here is a closer look at their faces in hopes that you can identify one of them. Lacey Police, they want to catch these two. Submit an anonymous tip to Crime Stoppers of the South South. Use the P3 Tips app or call the hotline 1-800-222-TIPS. On behalf of all the good people in the world, I want to apologize to that sweet lady for just doing the right thing and trying to help. We hope this doesn't ruin your faith in humanity. And we're going to get you some justice. To the Tri-Cities now, where Jose Aspetita lured a woman into a restaurant in Pasco last year, locked the door behind her, then attacked and raped her, according to police. He pleaded guilty in Franklin County in November. But then guess what? This rapist never showed up for his sentencing. He has not been seen since. Jose Aspetita also goes by the fake names Ishmael Lopez Aspetita, Antonio Jose Lopez, and Jose Antonio Lopez. He's 43 years old, 5'6", weighs 120 pounds. He has a cross tattooed on his right shoulder and the name Jordan on both of his forearms, Brandon and praying hands on his left shoulder, and an eagle on his right forearm. You can tell officers where to find him. Submit an anonymous tip right now to Tri-Cities Crime Stoppers and collect a cash reward of up to $1,000 when your tip leads to his arrest. The allegations in this next case are just horrendous. This is a photo showing a presumably loving father holding his new baby boy. Tonight, that father, Thomas Sims, is a wanted man, accused of hurting his son so badly that that child spent weeks in the hospital with a fractured skull. Federal Way Police are asking for your help to find Sims tonight. King County prosecutors have charged him with domestic violence assault of a child in the first degree. Washington's most wanted is Jennifer Lee. Talked with the boy's mom, who wants justice for Javon. When I look at him, he looks like the same baby. It I can just tell that he doesn't have that spark that he used to. This little guy is Javon Sims. He could have died. It makes me very sad because he shouldn't have to go through this. Police say his own father lashed out in anger and violently assaulted him on August 25th. I stood up to go um, check on Javon and I heard a big scream. His mom says her son was limp and unconscious. Somebody who in the past has been violent with me. I never thought would be violent with their own son. Javon suffered a fractured skull and bleeding in his brain. Doctors tell the mom her boy's injuries were no accident. It was blunt force trauma to the head. Javon spent weeks in ICU recovering from two brain surgeries. Now he needs this tube for food and medication. Prosecutors have charged his own father, Thomas Sims, with domestic violence assault on a child. He shouldn't have to live his life like this because somebody else got frustrated and didn't want to be the parent that they were supposed to be to him. Javon will stay strapped down to a pad just to keep him safe while his body heals. He was always smiling and giggling. His mom says she'll keep him close and wait for the day Javon is back to being her smiling bright boy. I just want my son to know that I never gave up on him and fought until The person who did this paid for it. Now, according to the charging documents, Thomas Sims told detectives he would not run. Well, he lied. He is on the run. 
and he's wanted for a half million dollar nationwide warrant for his arrest. Police think he may be in the federal way or Snohomish County area. He's 33 years old, 6'1", 180 pounds. He does not have a car. He takes Lyft or a bus to get around. He often wears black rimmed glasses. He's a very frequent visitor to marijuana shops and he's always matching his clothes, his shoes to his tops, for example. Keep an eye out for Thomas Sims. If you know where he is, submit a tip to Crime Stoppers and get the cash reward. If you spot him, call 911. Well, that's a preview of some of the cases we need your help with this weekend. Join me for Washington's Most Wanted to see all of them tonight at 1130 on Q13 Fox, tomorrow night at 10 on Joe TV, and 1030 on Fox stations in Spokane, Yakima, and Tri-Cities. If you can't watch the show live, please record it. We need your help to make sure these criminals have nowhere left to hide.